We are at round five, the penultimate round at Brands Hatch. We want to talk about diversity in motorsport, something quite important to me. I'm on my way to uh, Ella's Farm Distillery in Yorkshire. In motorsport, to me, one of the biggest issues is the lack of diversity. My name is Sam Parker. I'm a drift instructor and TV presenter for Catrum. This year, I'm taking on my largest ever challenge. I'm going to compete in the Catrum Academy series with the support of Catrum and Dutch Brand Vodka. Whilst I have some experience behind the wheel of a seven, I've never raced on track before. I'll be learning everything from the basics of a race license through to competitive racing against 56 other drivers in seven rounds of an entire season. This is my journey through a season in the Catrum Academy. Today we are at round five of the Academy season, which is the penultimate round at Brands Hatch in Kent. Now Brands holds quite a special place in my heart because it's where I did my first ever job for Catrum Cars back in 2003. But before we get into this weekend's action, we want to talk about diversity in motorsport, something quite important to me. So we're going to take you to Ellis Farm Distillery and meet our sponsors, Dutch Barn Vodka. Diversity in motorsport matters to me because um, everyone should feel that they have a place within the motorsport community. There is a place for everybody and everyone should just be made to feel welcome. You know, traditionally and stereotypical drivers are white males, but you know, I think we should be changing that and there is change happening. So my journey began uh, with being a grid girl in motorsport. So from a grid girl, I met Catrum. Um, I was a promotional girl on one of their stands at a car show. Uh, I just got really, really well with the Catrum team. I then started working on their experience days, making tea and coffee, just chatting to the customers. Um, but I'm so into motorsport and into driving and cars and I love it. So they taught me how to, how to drive them um, on those experience days. So I just went from that and then that's 20 years then I've been on those days becoming an instructor um, and also then it evolved into being a presenter for the motorsport live stream. So I've been lots of roles, but without being a grid girl at the beginning, I wouldn't be where I am today. In the, my motorcycle journey, any difficulties I've had is probably judging a book by its cover. Being a promotional girl and grid girl, people think you know that you're maybe not involved in the team or you're not interested in it. Um, you know, I've got a love for motorsport and, and passion for it and passion for cars. But yeah, judging a book by its cover. So on the experience days in the past, you know, we say Sam's going to demonstrate the course. So we could do a demonstration to show which course these customers have to drive around the coast, do this their slalom or drift day. And on one particular event, this is a long time ago, somebody said, what, the blonde bird? And, you know, that, that's judging a book by its cover. But obviously I did the demonstration and afterwards he was like, OK, fair enough. But, you know, that, that's, that's really the, the only um, issues I've had in motorsport. So today I'm on my way to uh, Ella's Farm Distillery in Yorkshire. Um, and I'm going to meet up with Chris Fraser their founder and chairman, which will be great to have a great chat with him. Um, we're going to discuss a little bit about diversity in motorsport and, you know, why they wanted to sponsor me and why they wanted to get involved in um, sponsoring a female in Cajun motorsport. We're also going to be meeting uh, with Kirsty Durrant, who is Cajun's championship coordinator. So it'll be interesting to see how she got involved in Cajun motorsport. Um, and how she finds it being within the motorsport industry. I've brought the Caterham up to uh, Ellis Farm Distillery today. Um, it's great to have a drive on the Yorkshire country roads. Um, it's been a fantastic, that's the beauty of doing the academy is you get a race car and a road car. So yeah, it's been very, very enjoyable driving it on the road. Hi Chris. Hey Sam. How are you doing? Good to see you. Yeah, thanks for coming up. Thank you for having me here. I'm looking forward to seeing the, the distillery. Yeah, well, shall we go? Yeah, let's go. Let's go. Wow, this is cool. Yeah. Really cool. So, yeah, this is where we make Dutch Barn, which wow. is uh, obviously all over both of our cars. So yeah. really, really simply what we do here is we do something that a lot of distilleries don't do when they make vodka in the UK is we actually make our own alcohol. So over here we make a really, really strong cider from British apples. 
and then we come, bring, come in here to where all the really, really cool stuff is with the uh, almost like a set from Breaking Bad where we um, basically turn that into what we think is one of the best vodkas in the world. These technically are the tallest rectification columns in Europe, but because of UK planning regulations, we had to split it in half. Wow. So it's actually meant to be all the way through the roof. Okay. But <laughs> and the name Dutch Barn, because it's in... Yeah, this was a Dutch Barn, and we kept, we kept the Dutch Barn shape. So you've got this sort of um, curved roof. So normally Dutch Barns are basically really simple pole structures with a curved roof. And I just love the name. So we sort of, when we, when we found the site and we were thinking of a name for, for the vodka, just this name just kept coming back to the top. And I remember sitting in my garden one day going, yeah, I think that's the name we'll go yeah. for. It's sort of slightly weird because obviously I'm Australian. We're in England making a vodka made from apples and calling it Dutch. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know whether there's just something perverse in my sense of humor. Yeah, it's nice. It's good to know the, the, you know, the background yeah. behind it. Yeah, and then obviously now we, we also make a, a whiskey here, as you can see, laid down here. Tell me about your motorsport journey. How did you get involved in it and what made you get involved? Yeah, I mean, I've been a motorsport absolute fanatic for my entire life. I mean, uh, I remember as a kid, basically, when, uh, when Formula One came to Adelaide for the first time and watching it and Senna and Prost and all those guys racing around that was really sort of the thing that sort of just sparked it and then from then on was just obsessed by motorsport all forms of it um, but with work so busy just never had the opportunity to um, to really do anything and then one of my friends um, Elliot Norris he'd done catering years before and I just sent him a message saying look you know I want to I want to do some, finally do some racing. And he said, oh, I'll just do catering. He said, the paddock's awesome. You'll learn driving so much better. And so rung up a dealer. I said, oh, any chance of doing academy next year? And he goes, yeah, sure. And then before I knew it, the car was arriving. So I did academy in 21. And then because of work and things, I, I needed team support. So I jumped over road sport in 270 and went straight into 310. Uh, did that for a year and a half. Ordered my 420 already because I was already addicted. And then halfway through 23, jumped into the 420 and did a couple of rounds. And that's what I've been doing this year. So Dutch Barn have kindly sponsored my academy season this year. And um, what prompted that? Well, I, uh, part of my philosophy of business is business should do good when they, when they turn up and do things. So in motorsport, to me, one of the biggest issues is a lack of diversity. I mean, there's a lot of people like me in motorsport, you know, uh, white middle-aged men, racing around uh, living out their boyhood dreams um, much like this guy <laughs> um, so I, t I was talking to Caterham about the idea of like you know wanting to sponsor and find a way to help um, bring more women into sport and they mentioned this opportunity that you were exploring of potentially coming and doing academy and I thought brilliant so uh, a great way for you to get some support us to sort of associate with helping build that diversity and the opportunity to do this series where I think hopefully it's really broadening that reach and giving it an exposure to not just girls thinking about go-karting but you know women who've had kids or you know have got yeah. family or whatever just like us can you want to go and live go and do motorsport Caterham's a great place. Well that's it I was going to say like traditionally people think that to be a become a racing driver you have to be a white male of a certain young age but you know, in the Caterham paddock, that's not the case. We've got different people from well, all sorts of backgrounds, you yeah. know. The more I think people can see that it's open and it's available and an opportunity is, I think that makes it more welcoming. It's all about just trying and getting out there. And I think uh, the Caterham paddock, I think, is one where it's a really welcoming space that if, if women want to come and try motorsport, great place to try it, relatively affordable, um, and, but a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of fun. And you make lifelong friends. Yeah. You? Yeah, I mean, after the races, I mean, it's ever, no matter where you are, as long as you've had fun, everyone's like, you know, high-fiving and hugging and yeah. all sorts of things. And oh, the Park Farm Fermi yeah. atmosphere is amazing, isn't yeah. it? So what progression would you like to see for women in motorsport in the future? Um, obviously, getting more drivers on, on the circuits, on the grids, I think is probably the, the best thing because motorsport's one of those things where I think there's no reason why. Um, there's no physical advantage between men and women. So actually seeing something where we can get, you know, as, as close to equal grids over time would be great. Um, you know, generally like in business, I think diversity is brilliant because you get better thinking, you get better, better working environments. So for me in motorsport and catering, I'd love to see, you know, a much higher percentage of women on the grids 
and then uh, you know see see some women come through and get up to the 420 level. And that's where hopefully this series can really help encourage some some women to uh, give it a go and yeah. come along and have some fun. I really hope so. Yeah. Yeah. So Chris, thank you for having me up That's here. Right. Uh, it's been lovely to see Ella's farm. It's a pleasure. And uh, thank you for sponsoring my journey this year. No, absolute pleasure. It's been great to see you uh, go so well so far. Thank one, you. one more round to go, right? One more to go. Right, so I'm now going to go inside and meet up with Kirsty, Championship Coordinator. Hello. Hello. How are you? I'm good. Nice to see you. And you. Oh, thanks for coming up here. It's OK. Lovely thank you for the you. invite. <laughs> And you've got tea. I know. Perfect. It's like I know you. Oh, I know. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've known you for a long time now. Um, yes, yeah. <laughs> but, um, but, you know, some people don't really know what your role is within Catrum or what it involves. So Championship Coordinator, but just tell us a bit more about that. Yep. So Kirsty Durrant, Championship Coordinator at Caterham. Um, so my role and the team that I work with is effectively um, to support the event, to, to sort of do the background work. We work in conjunction with Bark, who is our organising club, so I work quite closely with their event organisation. Um, effectively, it's everything from putting the calendar together at the start of the season. Uh, obviously, we run the six championships. It's everything from regulations all the way through to um, general event organisation from the timetable to making sure the hospitality unit's set up, making sure everyone's where they need to be. Um, we also have the support team. We manage uh, sort of all the logistics for getting everything to the track, which can sometimes be, have its own challenges. Mm. Um, so yeah, and we're lucky enough that we are a full-time team. Um, so there's a couple of us in it. So yeah, so that's pretty much a very short <laughs> version of yes. what, what it is. It's a lot more involved, does. isn't it? It's, <laughs> it is a lot more involved. It's a lot of office work, um, which I think some people don't tend to always realise how much office work there is to go to putting in the event and everything yeah. like that. Tell me about your journey in motorsport, like how how's it been for you getting involved with Catrum and your experience? So I'd always, I think like typically been an F1 fan. I went to uh, join Kent Police, I met a fantastic lady called Abby Hay who had, who had previously worked at Caterham, left and come to work in the police, we met each other. She came back to work for Caterham, effectively doing the role that I do now. And when it came to me leaving, a job opportunity had opened up, um, sort of came for an interview. And I became the assistant and that's how I got into motorsport. I'm fortunate enough to have, this is my full-time job, so I do it full-time. Um, and yeah, and then six years later, I've never looked back. 10 years in the place, moving into motorsport, it was, it was it's quite a steep learning curve, especially very coming, different. Yeah, especially coming from, you see the glitz and the glamour of F1 and you're always like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> and then um, to actually like see the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes, um, it was very much a steep learning curve, um, but I've loved every minute of it. I was very fortunate with the way that I was able to get into it as well, mm. because it's not something that, I think people find that easy to sometimes get into, especially yeah. when you've got such passion for it as well. So, so no, I'm very, very, very fortunate. Yeah. Well, that's it. We were, you know, discussing with Chris earlier, mm. like, you know, in motorsport, it's seen as a very male dominated sport. Yes. But, you know, that's not necessarily the case, is it? No, I think the initial perception obviously is more focused around the drivers and that is quite a heavily male dominated environment. I think behind the scenes um, there's a lot more females involved uh, the, and I think the role diversity with what gets involved in, in the behind the scenes as well really helps because you know anything from marshalling to um, working in the different uh, motorsport clubs that you've got across the UK whether that be working in race control, doing the race secretary roles, um, there's so many different varieties. Mm. You know, a race meeting is a race meeting, whether you're at the very, very high end of F1 or at a club race meeting, effectively the way it is run is very, very similar. Mm. Um, and those roles are there no matter what level you're at. It's good to see the diversity, but also in the roles that aren't necessarily always spoken about or seen. Yeah. Have you had any struggles with being a female in most sport or have you seen anything that's been an issue? I think for me personally, I wouldn't say I've had a particular struggle. There are times where obviously it is a male dominated environment um, and at times, you know, it can be, it can be quite intimidating. 
uh, especially if you're, I remember the first ever event I attended, <laughs> it was quite intimidating, you know, you're trying to boss around a grid of, you know, 30 odd grown men and it's a bit like, oh God, right, um, okay, <laughs> yes, no, sorry, can you, can you please go there? In that respect, it can be, it can be quite intimidating, not yeah. necessarily because the people are intimidating, but, you know, the environments that you're in, you have to be quite, um, quite strong, quite outgoing. Mm. And I think maybe sometimes that's why you do see less women in the forefront of motorsport. Um, finally, is there anything you'd like to see progression wise um, within motorsport for the future? Yeah, I think like many people, um, this is quite a unique sport with motorsport where male and female are quite on levels. And, you know, six years into doing, being at Cage Room, I definitely would like to see more female drivers. We've started to see more come in over the years, um, but yeah, every year we've sort of had two grids of academy, yeah. like yourself, mm -hmm. and um, we have got females in the other championships as well. So it'd be good to see more come through, uh, like through academy and then move up the ladder to get to the top level and see that more diversity within, mm. within motorsport, uh, definitely at Caterham, but more in general as well. And Caterham are very welcoming, you know, it doesn't seem, it, we, I've always felt very, very comfortable <laughs> within the paddock, um, you know, and there is, like you said, there are plenty of women oh. in the other roles in Caterham as well, but it'd be lovely to see more drivers, yes, more female drivers. It's been lovely to chat to you and um, yes. hear your side of the story. <laughs> um, thanks for meeting and um, we'll see you at Donington. You will indeed. Thank you for having me. It's been lovely to see you again. <laughs> Um, so it's been really, really lovely to speak to Kirsty and Chris here today and hear about their experience in, in uh, motorsport. It's actually quite interesting to know that it is more diverse than people think, um, but it's obviously be great to see more females in motorsport coming through the driving side, particularly because that is the part that probably needs to be a bit more evened out. Yeah, it's been really, really interesting. Um, now back to brands. got my tea so I'm happy now I needed that after that qualifying session I qualified third which I'm absolutely ecstatic about I, I, I can't believe it. I don't think it's quite sunk in yet but we had a fantastic uh, qualifying session it was looking drizzly it was raining this morning so it was a little bit slippery for the 270s that were before us but fortunately it was bone dry for our qualifying session but it was absolutely brilliant I loved it I'm buzzing so can't wait for the race later on third I'm like third are you joking I was like oh and I, literally I couldn't control the tears oh it's well done how exciting oh no it is oh Brand Hatch has been absolutely brilliant. I've loved it. I love it as a track. I feel really comfortable here. And just the, the, the way of driving it is just awesome. I love it. Um, the race itself, I uh, qualifying was third, which I was absolutely ecstatic about. Like the fact that I qualified third was just uh, a season high for me. In the race, I finished ninth. It was chaos, but uh, absolutely loved it. I had great battles with Dan Crawley um, and Ollie White. So yeah. Brilliant, brilliant race, so we're super happy. 
can't believe it's finished already. Like it's going so quickly and I don't want it to end. So yeah, one more round to go after here at Donington and I literally can't believe it's the last, it, that would be the end of the season. It's really sad because I don't want it to end. Um, coming back to the um, the title of this episode, Diversity in Motorsport, um, you know, Kate should make everyone feel so welcome. It doesn't matter what you look like, who you are, where you're from, um, what experience you've got, or, you know, it literally doesn't matter. Everyone, anyone is made to feel super welcome. Um, and all the drivers and teams make everyone feel welcome as well. You know, I've never, I feel so at home in this paddock and feel comfortable with everybody. You know, it, it's a fantastic environment to be around.